Netflix has released a few new horrors in the last month, and I'm doing my best to catch up with them. I had a request to check out His House, a new haunted house horror, so I figured that'd be as good a place as any to start. So, here's my review of His House. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights, a part of the Kings of Horror Network. I'm M.L. Miller. While you might be watching this video on the Kings of Horror Network, I urge you to click over to my M.L. Miller Frights page and give it a like, share with your buddies across the electronic superhighway, click subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Please get the word out to new folks so we can make the Kings of Horror Network, as well as M.L. Miller Frights, bigger and better. Be on the lookout for a new Kickstarter campaign for an anthology I participated in called Nightmare Theater. This is a collection of short horror stories made by a whole gaggle of talented souls. The project is being helmed by David Schrader and Clay Adams. I paired up with my pirouette artist extraordinaire Carlos Granda for a morbidly fun morality tale to film goers who dare break the rules of common courtesy in the wrong theater. If you're interested in fun, scary, and gory horror, please support the Nightmare Theater Kickstarter campaign. Look below for the link. His House is new, streaming on Netflix. It's directed by Remy Weeks and written by Felicity Evans, Tony Venables, and Remy Weeks. Bull, played by Sopi Dirisu, and Rial Majur, played by Lovecraft Country's Wonmi Mosaku, are refugees from South Sudan arriving in London and hoping to begin a new life. They have been supplied a house and a weekly wage from the government and are given temporary asylum to the country that will be under much scrutiny until they are eligible for citizenship at an unspecified amount of time. Almost immediately when Bol and Rial move in, things just don't seem right. The house is in much disarray, but even beyond that, when ghostly apparitions begin appearing, Rial believes they are being haunted by a witch that has followed them from South Sudan. Bol is not so sure, and while he sees the haunts, he doesn't want to accept that they are the cause of it. But they'd better figure it out soon, because they're being checked on by government workers who will send them back to their war-torn homeland if they prove to be not assimilating well. Luckily, they are assigned Doctor Who's Matt Smith, who shows up in a bit part as a government agent with a soft spot for the couple. His house does a fantastic job of setting up a two-tiered assault on the measures right from the beginning. While they're being given a chance by the English government, their chances of success are very narrow, as they are living in rough conditions, given a very little in terms of an education about the environment they have been dropped into, and are to follow the strictest of guidelines, lest they be deported. On top of that, ghostly and decayed beings are slothing around in the dark corners and holes in the walls at home telling them to leave the only sanctuary they have. Bull and Rial are caught between a rock and a hard place, thus making this a very compelling problem challenging them. This provides a myriad of threats for the couple to face, be it in the neighborhood which is less than willing to accept them, or the monsters in the walls threatening to devour them. Director Remy Weeks does a great job of setting up some spectacular fright sequences that rival the well-orchestrated frights seen in James Wan's films and their Blumhouse brood. On top of that, Weeks does a marvelous job of making the world outside of the apartment look and feel like a threatening and alien landscape, as Bol and Rial attempt to get the lay of the land and understand where they are. There's a scene where Rial leaves the home for the first time that is as tense and terrifying as the darkest of ghoul come and at you scenes you can think of, though there are plenty of those in his house as well. Sope Dirisu and Wunmi Musaku are two fabulous actors, giving a lot of heart and soul to get behind as the majeures. Musaku was one of the most compelling actresses in Lovecraft Country. Here she gives an equally compelling performance as a woman familiar with her ancestry and its roots in the supernatural, but not afraid of it. Musaku gives a strong performance of someone attempting to maintain her heritage despite insurmountable odds to leave it behind. Sope de Risu gives an equally strong performance and provides the flip side to Rial's reaction. 
As Bull, he is eager to assimilate into the culture, wanting to fit in and forget about the hardship of his homeland. Seeing these two very different attitudes towards their new situation converge and bash into one another provides an emotional and cultural heft that elevates this film above typical haunted house flicks. The scares are many and potent in his house. The design of the little girl who haunts the majeures in their home is truly terrifying, as are the scores of ghoulies she brings with her. Horror's go-to lanky man, Javier Botet, provides his creepy presence as the witch in the climax, but I felt the strongest scares occurred in the earlier moments of the film. The meaning behind the haunt and their emotional impact hits hard in his house. When everything falls into place, it's late in the film, and I think that's a smart move because had we known about these certain details of the Majeur's escape from South Sudan, they might not have been so easy to like in the beginning. But Weeks reveals these details late in the game, and by that time, the investment is there, and it's hard not to pull for the couple to survive this impossible ordeal. This is a haunting tale with a compelling conflict supported by two super strong performances. His house loses steam during the climax. It might have been because of the revelation that surfaces in the last act, or because there simply was too much going on at once. I did find the resolution to be satisfying, providing no easy answers, but still addressing some of the issues that inundated the measures from the beginning. His house is a bit top-heavy, as it seems to pack a lot of effective scares and a winning conflict in the beginning, and might weaken in the latter portions, but still works most of the way through, and depicts a relevant struggle that most of the world knows very little about. Good on this film for shining some light on that. That'll be it for today. Please chime in in the comments and let me know what you think of this video, how on the nose or mind-numbingly wrong I am, or you can counter with your own review. If you like this video, please pound that thumbs up button, share this video with your social media addicted pals, if you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on mlmillerwrites.com. Don't forget, I have two new horror comic book trade paperbacks you should look for. Grave Trancers is out right now. And Pirouette, collecting never-before-published issues, will be out in November 18th in only the finest of comic book stores. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for alerts to be the first to see my future videos. Thank you so much for your time, and take care. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be stuck inside.